Scan 3D PT. For Vlogmas, I'm going to do a project that I've kind of been thinking about for a long time. And I figured with the holiday season, um, it would be fun to do this. And I've wanted to always make some sort of stained glass with 3D printing. Now, there's tons of ways to do this without using without using actual glass. And a lot of elementary teachers know this method where you basically mix um, uh, school glue and food coloring or school glue and paint and make a and use different methods to basically paint a stained glass faux stained glass shape um of course i want to expand it a little bit um because i think it's fine to use like puff paint or acrylic paint to do that um but if you want some more refined lines i think you could definitely 3d print a frame so i just uh typed in um, Christmas tree designs on my on Google, and just found a kind of generic, kind of blockish um, coloring book sheet that I think would look really nice to print and to fill in with glue. And so, I'll include the link for this below. And you can do this with any uh, form. So I uh, just found this generic kind of Christmas tree design. And it, it's downloaded as a PDF form. For these ornaments, uh, these two are just ones that I designed quickly in Tinkercad. This one came from a black and white coloring book picture. Now to fill these in, this is um, clear school glue and acrylic paint. And later in part two, I'll show you how to mix that and uh, paint this onto the material. Now I like to use onlineconvert.com to uh, change my files into different things. So it has a PDF to SVG converter. And this way, it if you're not artistically inclined like I am, um, and you're not very good at using like Inkscape or any of those drawing programs, you can find someone else's drawing and go from there. So for this, I converted a PDF file to an SVG, and I'm gonna use Tinkercad to import it and modify it. Now, when I did that, it imported this whole block and the lines where the net came out negative space. So I could fill that in and just have those lines of color, but that's not what I want at all. So. What I have to do is um, basically kind of hack around this and save it as a picture and use that to make the outline. So again, this time I saved it as a PNG picture and covered that. And so that's a lot better. So now I could import it into Tinkercad. So when it gives you the dialog box to import it, um, it might or might not show up as a whole picture here. But the scale on this is incredibly large. So generally, whenever I do this, I always drop it down to about 20%. Let me import it. And so now I have the outline that I could use for my stained glass. So now that I have this basic outline, you can see how I could fill in all the spaces there with the different colored paints. But to have this work um, and look more like stained glass, there's uh, I'm gonna have to go through and clean up just a little bit because in this frame here, there's no uh, connecting points between it. And I might add a little bit more to the background there. And so it's up to you how you want to do this. You could also maybe even design your own things like your own ornament shapes or anything like that. But I'm going to size this down a little bit so it's something a little more like hand sized because uh, right now this is pretty large. And I'm going to make some other changes to it. So this is where. You could have a great activity with uh, your kids learning Tinkercad 
and you can kind of play around with different options. Next, I'm going to add a uh, holder for these uh, suction cups because I do want to put this in a window. And these are actually um, they're sold as light holders that you can get uh, for uh, Christmas lights. And I've also used these for uh, projects with uh, my clean dirty tanks, and I'll include a link above. But um, I'm just going to put a loop on top for these. So I put a attach a hole at the top so I could hang this with a suction cup. And for this, I just used a hexagon shape and put a 12 millimeter cylinder through it. And you could adjust this for other things, like if you just want to use like a ornament hook or anything else, uh, you could just play with that. And I think I'll add maybe a couple other things. I want to add a sunburst to this and a maybe a tree stand. So I'll see what I can add to it. So when I tried doing this earlier, I noticed that a lot of the walls were way too thin and they weren't going to print. And there's a couple ways you could thicken up the lines. If you're good with Inkscape, you can make sure they're good from the start. But for this, pretty much the easiest thing to do is make a copy and paste of the shape, duplicate it, and expand it a little bit so it fills in those gaps. And for what I'm doing, if there's a couple little spots that are weird, that's fine. Um, but I'm just going to do this rather than screw around with the scaling. Now, when I exported it uh, for printing, you'll notice there's an issue. So all these gray lines, when I went to view the layer view, tell me that it's not going to print. And so I have to figure out what I could do for that. And my quick and dirty solution is see here let's see let's do 120 and slice that now if you ever have always check your layer view to see if it'll actually print So right now it's still going to miss some details on the inside. Um, I would like to have these here, but you can see it's just not doing this. And the problem for me is I've got a half millimeter nozzle. So it's just too broad for something like this. 
unless it took a little bit of fiddling um and i ended up just adding a couple things just to beef it up around the edges so i've still got one spot that's probably going to look a little weird um i'll have to play with that or when i actually get to making the stained glass part and in cura i'm going to do under special mode i'm going to do both for both surface which is surface and normal. And what that does is it makes sure that the outside edge is built and that the inside gets filled. Because if I do normal, it leaves some of the edges out. And so I'm going to print this in PLA and um, for backing, for print surface, I'm going to print over packing tape. That way I have a nice smooth surface if it hangs against uh, glass. And also later on when I actually do this, I'm going to tape the back. So just have that nice backing. <laughs> 